Oh darn, it's actually raining ever so slightly. today where apparently there's more tourists getting in trouble bringing their drones to different countries. This one says Chinese tourists arrested for flying drone over Taj Mahal and the person was released. In yet another repetition of a security violation at the Taj Mahal, a Chinese tourist was arrested by the local police for flying a drone in the Meta Bagh which falls within the restricted zone of Taj Mahal where flying of drones is not permitted. The tourist was later on released with a warning after he submitted a written apology to the police. It's one of those things too, I suppose, where a lot of times you buy the drone in your own country. I guess you're not very updated in terms of the regulations elsewhere. So when you go there, it's like, wow, what a nice scenery. Let's capture it here. Because in places like China, actually, the drone laws are actually way more lax compared to, like, say, a place like here. For example, we freak out over things like flying drones over people and stuff. Whereas over there, it's like, hey, it's just like a regular camera. And as it says here, commenting on the incident, Agra Tourist Welfare Chamber President Prahalag Agrawal said that most tourists coming to the Taj Mahal are unaware of the restriction on flying drones near the Taj Mahal. Quote, there are no signboards anywhere around the Taj Mahal that show that flying drones is restricted. Since drones are the latest in photography equipment, most tourists carry these drones with them to document their travel through India. To me, that's perfectly believable as opposed to a situation, say, someone knows they can't fly in a certain area or whatever, but they just figured, hey, I'm going to get like an epic shot. It says, even the Uttar Pradesh tourism website on the Taj Mahal does not mention specifically about the prohibition on drones, which creates confusion among the tourists and consequently, the image of India and Agra gets tarnished because the tourists get arrested and have to face police for something which is not a crime in their country. I guess that is kind of a weird problem to have in your country in terms of arresting people because that's just what it says on paper even though you know most people are just oblivious to like I guess the law in that case. Kind of reminds you I guess of that other situation too of those tourist vloggers or travel vloggers that are basically detained and now they're being held as political prisoners I guess you could say because they flew their drone. Makes you wonder when and if the world's going to finally just say, hey, these consumer drones for the most part that people bring, they just use them as photography equipment. Kind of like what's implied in the article. And the last thing I read is one of those, how come we still don't have this here? It says Vancouver passes ride hailing rules, including anti-congestion levy, wave fees for electric, accessible vehicles. The city of Vancouver has passed its inaugural ride hailing rules that will change an anti-congestion levy for trips starting or ending in and around downtown as well as waive a new $100 licensing fee for electric cars or vehicles able to transport wheelchairs. After hours of debate on Wednesday, councillors approved the staff recommendations to become the last major North American city to allow ride hailing companies such as Lyft and Uber to operate. This is kind of an interesting bit of line here. It says, to counter a potential spike in traffic, Created by this nascent industry, Vancouver will charge 30 cents each time a ride hailing vehicle drops or picks up a customer downtown in the neighborhood surrounding that area between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. How is that even a thing? That's kind of weird, isn't it? But yeah, I guess in general, there's going to be finally like ride sharing and stuff here, although it won't be like the rest of the world because what we have here apparently, not anyone with just a regular driver's license will be able to do this. You need, I believe, a class four here anyways. So I don't know how it will actually work. So it'd be nothing like everywhere else in the world in terms of the availability. So it makes you wonder if it will be a success or not. Because just from the sounds of it here, there's so much fight between like taxi companies and ride sharing companies and stuff still. To me, it's more competition is better. I mean, some of the fees you pay for a taxi is ridiculous just for like a little distance. How come all the ducks have been sleeping so early just these past few weeks? Is it just because the weather's getting colder and everything?
All right, see you guys later.